Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, it's, it's good to see some old faces, some new faces here. Um, and it's good to be back here. And uh, it, is, it is good to be back in the United States. I've been out of the United States for over a year now. The last time I was in the US was the last time I was here in Florida. So uh, it's amazing how many uh, things we take for granted here in the US that when you're in a country like Nepal, warm water, electricity, all these things aren't so readily available. So it's definitely a blessing to be back. Uh, and anyways, before we begin, I'll just uh, pray briefly, and then I will share some of the things that God has been doing in Nepal. Our Father in heaven, we come before you this morning, thanking you for the Sabbath day you've blessed us with. We thank you for the privilege to meet together here in your house of worship. And as we are, as I'm sharing today, I pray that you will speak through me, that uh, Jesus, we have lifted and glorified today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. It is true that deep darkness covers the earth. And living uh, in Nepal for the last several years that I've been living there, I have realized how deep that darkness really is when people do not know God. Um, here in the US, you see churches all over the place. It's, it's amazing, like I go to a store and they're playing Christian music. I go every corner, it seems like there's another church. When you go to Nepal, so few people um, are Christian, so few people know the true gospel. And uh, there is truly a tremendous work to be done. Over nearly 30 million people, and only um, a small percentage of them are Christian. I want to share a little bit, first of all, about what has been happening this last year, since the last time I was here, and then share some of the exciting new projects we are working on right now. So here, as you see, uh, a map of Nepal, and right there is Kathmandu. That is the capital of Nepal. Um, when you travel to Nepal, you always fly into Kathmandu. Well, my wife and I have actually spent the last year in a very far distant place in Nepal Ganj. It takes 15 to 18 hours by bus to reach there. It's not very far uh, in terms of how many miles it is, but because the roads are so bad, it's a very long trip. And that is an area where the Seventh-day Adventist Church has no presence at all, anywhere nearby. You go around six hours any direction, you won't find any church, anybody working or doing anything. It's a very... Um, it's a very dark area, very unreached area. And so we had the privilege of spending a year working in that region this last year. Here's a picture of my wife. We have the opportunity to visit Lombini, which is the birthplace of Gautam uh, Buddha, um, of course, with the Buddhism. And there in Nepal Ganj is also a very, uh, very large Muslim population. So Nepal is, um, a Buddhism and Hinduism especially, is very strong there. It is some of the most sacred sites within those religions are located in Nepal. And as a result, people are, uh, it's not just part, it's not just a religion, it's their culture. And so people are very, many people are not open to Christianity uh. because they see it as a threat to their culture, a threat to their way of life. And so they, uh, they're, it's not easy to, sh uh, to share. But in the Bolganj, um, when we had gone, we had gone for the purpose to set up a ministry center there um, and to establish a church because there was no church presence anywhere in that area, like I had mentioned. And one of the first things we did is we had one program, we partnered with Oklahoma Academy uh, and a group came there and we held a health and evangelism program. 
and uh, many things I could share about this, but it was kind of, it was, we definitely saw God leading in this program because up to two weeks before the program, we still did not have a location confirmed. We were looking at different schools, different areas we could have our program, and just things were not working out. And just two weeks before we were ready to begin, we got a phone call. Somebody in that, a Christian man in that village, got in contact with us because they heard we were in this area, and he asked us to come to his village, and they had a small group of Christian believers there. Um, and so we came, we met with them, and we saw this was the place that would be best for us to do our program. So the program had uh, three main components. First was a health component. In the daytime, we did health expo, checking blood pressure, glucose, and uh, basic health counseling, health screenings that we did. And then after that part, in the evenings, we had an evangelistic series. First time in the history of this area that there was an evangelistic series. And so we had quite a group that came every night. We had one uh, Adventist pastor who came as the main speaker. Um, and, and so every night he was preaching this evangelistic series. One night we had an interesting situation. Uh, while the pastor was speaking, four motorcycles came uh, driving up outside of where we're meeting and the uh, eight men got off and were standing just outside of the compound um, making some commotion and trying to signal for us to stop the meeting but uh, the pastor didn't want to stop the meeting he wanted to finish so he finished the meeting and once he finished these uh, men came up to him quite uh, angry quite aggressive and were confronting him uh, why are you doing this who are you who are you with now, what we had feared is that this group, uh, the Hindu party, uh, w was sending people to come to shut down our meetings. Well, it actually turned out these weren't Hindus, these were Christian pastors. Um, and they were very angry that we were doing this Christian work in this community, because we were Seventh-day Adventists. And so that is what we found out, is that our obstacle, uh, the opposition did not come from the Hindus, it came from the Christians in the community. And so, um, after meeting with them, they went around the village and were telling, oh, don't listen to the people, these people, this is not a true religion. And then they were saying, oh, uh, these people will come and take your children and take their organs and different, all kinds of things they were spreading around the village. But the amazing thing is, the, a few Hindu people that were in the meetings were actually defending us against the Christian pastors. So we saw God's hand working, we saw the enemy working, and in the end, uh, by God's grace, we were able to start a small church plant. Here is a picture, it was a tiny little room, we were meeting, sometimes up to uh, 20, 20 people meeting in this small room, and um, we have been continuing that up till today. Here's, here's another picture of some of that group. Now, when we had gone there, we had uh, some plans to do uh, some English classes, tailoring classes, at kind of an outreach uh, center there in Nepal Ganj. And we were working as an NGO, an organization. But just uh, within a month or two after this program, we had some problems that arose because in the country with the new constitution, religious liberty has been um, hindered a little bit compared to what it was before. There was about a period of six years in Nepal where um, there was no definite constitution. There was quite a level of religious liberty. We could go and preach evangelistic series. We can do a lot of these things with no problem. But now they are trying to stop that because, like I had mentioned earlier, they see as Christianity as a threat to their culture, a threat to their way of life, and so they don't want Christianity to spread because they see Christianity spreading in Nepal. So now, as an organization, you cannot do any kind of religious work. You can't even have a Bible in your office. And so it's made it very difficult for us how to work now because everything that we had been doing, now all of a sudden became illegal for us to do. So we have been praying, how can we work in a way that's not illegal, that won't cause us problems, that we can continue doing openly? The thing is, it is not illegal.
to go to church. It's not a, a, illegal to practice your faith, but it is to try to share your faith in evangelism, and especially as an organization. So we have been uh, praying, how is it that we can reach the people of Nepal? And so just recently, we came to the conclusion that the best way is to use a business, because as a business, you can do certain work uh, for profit, and there's no limitation, there's no hindrance to that, because uh, it's for profit. You're not trying to say, oh, I'm doing this social work, but then trying to convert people on the side. And so as a business, it's, uh, we have much greater freedom for that. And I'll share a little bit more um, in the future. But what we have realized is that now is the time for us to work to reach Nepal because we don't know how long even this level of freedom will last. It wasn't too many years ago that there was very severe persecution against Christians in Nepal. And we believe that we have a window. We had six years before, and that window has closed, and now it's a little more difficult. But we still have a window. We still can work. We just have to work carefully and wisely in our work. But we don't know how much more that will last. We don't know when rules will become even more strict in Nepal. And so that is why I, right now I have a great burden for this work that we have, we can't wait two years, we can't wait five years, we can't wait ten years because time is short and this religious freedom that exists in Nepal may not last forever because many people want to make the country a Hindu country as it used to be. So with that, I want to share just briefly some of the things that we have, some of the ministry projects that we have been working on. First of all, as I had mentioned last time I was here, we are being involved in television ministry. Because what we realize is in Nepal, there are so few people uh, who can actually do ministry, so few trained workers who can preach and teach. And there are so many places in Nepal, and so many of these places are difficult to reach. The transportation is very poor and inexpensive. So if you're gonna go out to a village to do ministry there, it's very time consuming. And with so few people to actually do the work, it'll take forever for this work to go forward. But with television, one person can speak and it can go to millions of people. Because so many people, even the poor people, have televisions in their homes. So, uh, we have been trying to do some programs for the last, um, since last year in July. Um, we have had this daily program that's been aired on Vision Television which is now being seen in over 400,000 households in the western region of Nepal, which is a very unreached area. But just, um, just this last uh, month or two ago, when I was there, I, we started to work up to set up our own studio so we can start producing programs. So here's some pictures um, of our setup here. Uh, it was a very, very basic studio, but just something uh, is better than nothing. And so here, here is with the green screen, and this is our first program being filled, being filmed um, by one young man, Isaac Pradhan, uh, who is a lifestyle educator. Um, he works with uh, one. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Sandra Horner. She's uh, part of Layman's Ministries, uh, and she's been doing work in Nepal for many years. And this is one of the people she has trained. So he is teaching about health. And I have one small video clip that I'm going to share uh, of what that looked like. Do we have volume? So what he is talking about here is he's talking about uh, charcoal, how to how to make charcoal, how to use charcoal, and we also talk about many other things, different hydrotherapies, um, the importance of water, the importance of sanitation. 
these type of things we have been doing because these are great needs that people have. There's a great lack of health education on these basic simple things. Another thing we have done is we have taken English videos and we have dubbed them into Nepali. Oh, I have one other clip here. This is a Cosmic Conflict by Doug Batchelor. Many of you may be familiar with that. And so, through these different ways, either dubbing the English videos or uh, and more of the like these the Bible messages or also the health messages, we're trying to get as many resources as possible for the people of Nepal. And these this has been showed now many times in the television program. We've also done. Uh, the Revelation Bride Beast in Babylon by Amazing Facts as well, uh, Final Events, and those, those type of things. Now, just uh, two months ago, we had a new addition to our team, um, Marsh and Monica Chowdhury. He's actually my brother-in-law. A, a miracle how God worked this all out, because um, he was considering going to like the UK or to Canada to work because his wife is a nurse, and in India they were, you know, is very diff difficult for them to make money as a nurse, especially. They wanted to uh, have a, you know, s some money so they can send their son to an Adventist school, those type of things. So they they were praying about what to do. We told them we have a lot of work here in Nepal. Would you consider coming? And so he was praying about it back and forth. Finally, he saw God's hand leading, and so he decided to join our team. And so now he is there um, in Nepal as uh, kind of managing the, the ministry work. And he, the advantage is he is, a, he is a Nepali person, so he speaks the language, he knows the culture, and so he can be much more effective even than myself. I, I don't know the language so well, I'm trying to learn, but he can be much more effective in, in working and reaching the people. And so we're very thankful that he has dedicated his his life to this work, and he's given up the opportunity to go to UK or Canada, make much more money. He decided to come and work for the people of Nepal. So now my goal is to help support him, to help support their work as they are uh, working for Nepal. So some of the other things that we are doing uh, is book translation. Uh, just before I left, I, we started the book True Revival. Um, by Ellen White, and then Thoughts from the Land of Blessings. Those are being translated right now, um, and they should be tr finished uh, by the end of January, early February. Will be the uh, we'll, we'll finish the translation. Then after that, um, the editing and proofing, and then hopefully we'll be publishing after a short time. And the thing is, when I uh, when you come to Nepal, in the U.S. we have so many resources. You have so many books and videos and tracks. There's too many almost. When you go to Nepal, there's like hardly anything. And there's only a couple books that have been translated. Um, many of them aren't even done well. And in so many areas of ministry, there are so many huge needs. It becomes overwhelming. And, um, and then there's many political issues within the church and different things that slow things down, and sometimes it can be discouraging. But then as I, then when you look back, you see how God is working. You see how God leads in small areas. You see that God is in control. And because if, if you feel, oh, this is my work, it's my responsibility, it can get overwhelming. It can get uh, discouraging. But when we, I realize that it's not my work, it's God's work, He's in control, He's raising up people. When I talk with other people have the, who have the same burden as I do, other people I meet who are also trying to work for Nepal, it's, it's an encouragement to see things are getting done. God is working. And really, there is no limit to what God can do. What is lacking is people. Really, money is not even an issue. God can give all the money in the world. 
what is lacking as people. People who will, who will give their lives to service for God. People who will work for God. And so that has been the challenge. We have been praying and seeking to try to find professional people, talented people who can work to do these things. And God has blessed us and allowed us to start to bring some professional people with our team. Now we have two professional translators working part-time for us, and then a professional editor, uh, uh, vid videographer who is managing our studio. And now we're on the lookout for people with graphical skills because that is our next project we've been working on, um, is the website. What we want to do is make as many avenues like website, publishing, and videos that uh, for people to be reached. Because in these areas, almost nobody's doing anything in Nepal. Like, uh, there's a, especially in Kathmandu, in the developed areas, many people have an internet. You see all the, the young people going around with their smartphones, big Samsung tablets and things like that. And they are not being reached. Most of the Adventist presence is in the small villages, you know, way out in the, in the mountains, which is good. There's a part for that type of ministry. But this area, reaching to the educated people, reaching to the people who have uh, access to internet, this is not being done up until now. And also, the Nepali community is very spread abroad. Many people, almost every home, has somebody working abroad in Saudi Arabia, in Dubai, in Malaysia, in these type of places. And many of them don't have access to churches to go to because in Saudi Arabia, how are they going to go to church? If there, Many Christians are there uh, from Nepal, but they can't go to church because there's no churches they can go to. But they can find these messages online. And I have actually seen them people from Saudi Arabia come onto our website. And so these type of things, we can reach out. One other project, um, we're taking these tracks. There's about 30 different titles, and we're making four full tracks, similar to Glow Tracks, many of you may be familiar with, and on different health and Bible topics. And so our plan is this. If we take a health track and have a website that is a Bible website, people will say, you're using health to try to convert people, right? And so what we have decided to do is we're going to have two websites. This is, I showed you before, Jameet Bachan. That is our uh, Bible website. So people want to see sermons and Bible studies and those type of things. They can go to that. And on the health tracks, it'll have that website. Uh, sorry, on the Bible tracks, it'll have that website. But then we will have a new website dedicated to health. And it will have every aspect of health, physical health, mental health, and spiritual health, because that is the full aspect of health, not just the body, but also the mind and soul. And so on the health tracks, then we'll have the health website, which we're um, hopefully going to be developing here in the next few months. And so then when we give out the health track, we can give it to anybody and there'll be no problem because it's, we're not trying to convert person, people like that. We're just sharing in a helpful uh, health uh, counsel, health education that will help the people. And then if people's interest is aroused, it will have avenues so they can uh, address the spiritual health aspect of things. Here's one sample that we are working on right now on cancer. Um, so there are so many different different things I could share. My time is very limited. I just wanted to share kind of a brief overview of some of the things that we have been working on recently. But like I said before, now is the time to reach Nepal. Now is the time for us to do everything we can. Now is the time to reach the U.S. Now is the time to reach our neighbors wherever we are. Because as we look out in the world, this world is in a bad shape. I am sure we are all very aware of that. We see the condition in this world, and I'm reminded that we don't have much more time. We don't know how long we have religious freedom even in this country. We have a window of opportunity. We have a window of freedom. This is the time for us to work for the salvation of others. This is the time for us to work 
for the building up of the gospel kingdom. You know, Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful. And that is true. The harvest is plentiful. Wherever you see in this world, you see uh, there's such a need. And many people are just waiting because they haven't heard, they haven't had the opportunity. They're waiting to hear. But then Jesus also said the laborers are few. And that is really the problem that we face. The harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. My encouragement to you today is that you think about how can God use me? Because God needs you. He wants to use you. You don't have to go to Nepal. You don't have to go to Africa. Maybe God is calling you to do that. But God has a work for you to do wherever you are, wherever you may be. It may be in your office, it may be in your family, it may be in your neighborhood. God has a work for you to do. And so I pray that um, seeing a little bit of the things in Nepal will inspire you and challenge you to even be active wherever you are because time is short and there's many people waiting to hear, waiting to receive the message that God has blessed us with. Thank you very much and let us pray as we close. Father in heaven, we thank you for the great privilege you have given to us in knowing the truth in your word. You have set us apart as Seventh-day Adventists as, um, as your messengers in these last days. And Lord, we have been reminded of the great needs around this world. And I pray for each one gathered here that you will impress upon their hearts what you're calling them to do. That you impress upon their hearts what they can do for you to reach others for the kingdom of God. We desire uh, to give our lives to you, to your service. We pray that you will fill us with your spirit. And now as we are preparing to take part of the communion service, prepare hearts and minds. We pray that all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.